Salutations! Exclamation point. Uh, the quality of Intel's XESS has quickly matched or even surpassed AMD's FSR in many titles. Is this simply a matter of Intel committing more resources to upscaling technology, or is XESS built on a foundation more conducive to iteration, or is it some other factor? Alex, I've got to go to you on this one, but surely it's the case that you know XESS just i don't know the first iteration on dp4a was kind of fsr yeah it was a lot more dodgy in 1.0 but uh xmx was always looking pretty was always looking awesome yeah generally great um here i do think the iteration of machine learning is is a key part to why it works the way it does i mean if you just think about it with something like FSR, you can maybe see what the issues are, but then coming up with the solution of how you fix it that fits in a certain frame budget is like an iteration thing that requires a lot of thought and ingenuity and time and hours of work that may or may not pan out to fit within a frame time budget. Whereas with machine learning, it's spending, I guess, a lot more time on the background doing the iterations and getting a different model. I mean, the difference is that one is requiring a lot more individual tuning that may not work for every use case, while the other one is kind of trying to soften the issues that can come from extraneous use cases, like where things don't match up with expectations. And I think that is the key reason why XESS is better than FSR, especially in the XMI. The thing is, I, this is a little bit annoying to me that people just always want to talk about DP4A because they're using it on maybe a Radeon ship or something like that. But like, really, the XMX version is so good and almost no one talks about it because no one has Intel. And mm-hmm. I find that a bit of a shame because it's kind of upfusk. Like when people are like, oh, you know, it's only so good Intel DP4A. It's like, but look at the other thing too. That's great. Uh, so yeah, in this case, I really do think machine learning is at least for the medium term future, the way to get uh, results that are iterated on quickly, that are getting better more quickly. And I, I really hope that AMD goes down that path soon enough because I don't think FSR is working out from a visual quality perspective vis-a-vis the competition. And I think if they want to give people a great incentive to buy their GPUs, they need uh, the quality to be at par with the mm-hmm. LSS. Well, it is interesting. Uh, obviously, I just watched your recent video on FSR 3.1. And when you have that side by side, FSR 2.2, FSR 3.1, XESS, DP4A, DLSS, you know, basically you've got a, a, a straight divide down the middle. The mm-hmm. FSR iterations are simply not as good as the machine learning implementations. And even XESS running on a chip that isn't equipped with, you know, tensor cores or matrix multipliers, it's still looking much, much better, right? Right, yeah. I guess uh, the other question which you raised in your video is, you know, when you look at Epic's TSR, which again seems to be outperforming FSR from an image quality perspective, it kind of demonstrates that maybe there's still legs in a in a software-driven approach. There probably is. And I think uh AMD should probably look at what they're what they're doing there. It's all you can just download the source <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you really, really want to. And Oliver's looked at TSR more than I have because Oliver's covered more things on console and I feel like it's panning out better there. I was genuinely shocked. Like when you'd look at that FSR 2.2 shot versus the TSR shot. And I just made mm-hmm. that like really simply. I was just like, okay, do a couple of kicks and punches in Tekken 8. And like just, it was immediate in motion in front of my eyes that TSR was like way better. And then if I just even show it like, just like the one snapshot, the, the FSR guy is just like full on pixels. And then the TSR one is like, anti-aliasing you know the thing you expect your graphics card to do for you um so yeah i really think they should just yeah i do i do wonder if some of it is stylistic like maybe amd wants fsr to be visually distinct from the competition because maybe there's been cases in history where uh people like raw graphics or people like tearing 
mm. or you know people like you know a variety of different things <laughs> uh I, i'm always a little curious exactly what or if it really is this the hardware wasn't ready for it so fsr is the medium term solution for amd well tp4a doesn't run on rdna1 right, right? Which, no, so it's awful. That, is, that is a limiting factor. Uh, sorry, XESS doesn't run mm-hmm. um, RDNA one. So you know there is possibly the pressure to have a solution that does run on RDNA one. But I would argue that you know in terms of overall progression, um, what can I say? There's probably not a huge amount of RDNA one GPUs out there. Certainly based on the G- on the Steam hardware survey. So I you know I think they should kind of move on. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know what can I say? It's uh, <laughs> the the image quality comparisons are just blatant at this point. Yeah, you know, and something needs to shift up. Any thoughts, Oliver? TSR is a lot better than FSR two slash three, or the image upscaling component of FSR three, I suppose, uh, to be more specific. In in the games that I have tried it uh, on Steam Deck and on. Ah, oh, geez, I was taking a look at Robocop. I think I featured that in the video. And in the FSR2 view, it's just like shimmering. It's a total mess. You're moving the camera and it's totally unstable. Whereas with TSR, it's very consistent and very clear. Probably not as clear and consistent as you get with DLSS, but certainly a much, much better. And at very low resolutions, like at 360p internal uh, upscaling to 720p, it's a night and day difference. It could not be more different uh, in these extreme scenarios where FSR is just like not, right. not even close. It's doing a lot better. So I don't know how it compares to XESS necessarily in every case, but it's certainly enough to give you a good experience where FSR is not giving you a good experience. Now, of course, TSR is only in Unreal, <laughs> whereas uh, FSR is everywhere. So that's a that's a... Uh, limiting factor, a big limiting factor. But I think if TSR, you know, is this much better than FSR, then certainly there's some room for iteration and improvement beyond just what we see with like FSR 3.1. I'm sure there's some room to improve things further. Mm-hmm. But um, at the moment, AMD is the only game in town really for this non-machine learning uh, upscaler in, in multiple game engines. So uh, that's kind of what you have to put up with, I suppose. I'm I'm just curious about one last thing is that with Direct SR coming out now, I think AMD has the opportunity to do something that only works on their own hardware because with that, um, their driver can overtake and allow for something that only runs on like RDNA 3 or RDNA 4, for example. And if a game targets direct SR, then they don't have to worry about... I think the reason why a company like AMD, unlike NVIDIA, cannot just be like, we're a software company is because they just don't have enough chips out there to allow for exclusive exclusive software like stuff to run. Like with NVIDIA, they can get away with it due to market share and mind share. But with AMD, they have less leeway there. So them pushing for open solutions always makes sense, I think, from their market perspective, usually. But now with DirectSR setting a playing field where the driver and Windows is just being handed inputs. And then the user, based upon their selection of IHV and driver, chooses what they want the output to be. I think that allows them in the future to iterate more and allow for things that are hardware specific. Um, but I don't, once again, I have no idea how many games are actually going to target DirectX SR. Obviously, it just came out to a certain degree. Uh, so none <laughs> but maybe for the future it's the way things are going to be but i don't know i'm kind of not so happy with direct sr in at the end of the day because i feel like it missed an opportunity and there was a great post on beyond 3d about this about they missed the opportunity to allow it to be more experimental and missed the opportunity for it to be more ambitious in what its design were because technically there's nothing that would have prevented direct sr to also allow the driver to do things like frame generation at the same time too mm. Um, okay. But that wasn't included in the spec. They also could have allowed for the the the, the game to include things like, I don't know, uh, like material values and all these other things to allow for ray reconstruction to be used with the rest, direct SR. But that's also not in there. It's kind of like minimum spec. 